Hello, in this one I'm going to show you how to find the value of this integral, and this is all in the context of complex analysis. So it says evaluate 1 over z dz over the unit circle from 0 to 2 pi. So first let's make sure we understand that. Here's the picture of the unit circle, and because it is the unit circle that means that this here is one unit. That means that the complex number at any point can be represented as z equals e to the i t for different values of t. Why do I want to know this? Because what I can do is I can replace z with e to the i t because they're equivalent. So I'm going to proceed as follows. I will say that z equals e to the i t. Then I will differentiate. So I'm going to have dz equals e to the i t. Bring the i down. That's the result of doing the chain rule, the old-fashioned chain rule. So you keep e to the i t. Then you differentiate i to the i t rather with respect to t. So this brings an i into that position. And then you add the dt. So what I can do now is the following, right? My integral has 1 over z dz. So what I can do, set up my integral from 0 to 2 pi, and that is so, because I'm going to begin here. And like the arrow shows, I'm going to integrate in this direction. So basically, all following the circumference of the circle back to here. That's why it's going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And then the z that you see over here can be replaced with e to the i t. So I've done that in the bottom, so it becomes 1 over e to the i t for that reason. And also the dz that you see here can be replaced with e i t and then i d t, so that comes onto this position right here. So what I've done is I've converted to t as my variable, away from z, so to speak. All right, so now what I can do is observe that e to the i t and e to the i t are present. One is in the top and one is in the bottom of a fraction. So what I can do at this step is I just cancel them off. So e to the it here cancels with the e to the it in the bottom. 0 to 2 pi is kept, nothing changes. The 1 is kept, the i is kept, and the dt is kept, and nothing changes with those. Next, what I'm going to do is, remember, i in this context is the imaginary unit. It's a constant value. It doesn't change. So for that reason, up here, what I can do is I can put the i outside the integral symbol, and I will be left with 0 to 2 pi dt for that simple reason. And now this is a simple integral, so I can just integrate as follows. I'm going to keep the i right here in this position at the next step. The antiderivative of the integrand here, well, the integrand is implied to be 1. When nothing is written, it's implied to be 1, naturally enough. So when I anti-differentiate that, it's going to give me a nice t in that position. And then here I'm going to put my lower limit of integration at 0, an upper limit of integration at 2 pi in that position. Nice. So lastly, I'm going to keep my i. And I'm going to evaluate at the upper limit minus the lower limit. So because the value here is just t, the expression is just t, it becomes the following. i times 2 pi, so replace t with 2 pi, minus the lower limit, which is 0. So it becomes 2 pi minus 0 multiplying i. So lastly, I clean it up a little bit so that the answer is 2 pi i. And that then, we can say, is the value of 1 over z integrated over this entire circle. And that is it. Thanks so much. Please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video.